In this video tutorial, I'm going to be discussing effect sizes and how they can be used in research. So to start off, what are they? Effect sizes express the magnitude of an effect such as, but not limited to, treatments and correlations. There have been multiple definitions on what effect sizes are and what they're meant to do, which has created some ambiguity over effect sizes and how they should be applied in research. But I quite like, and I'm going to be using Kelly and Preacher's um, definition that they used, that they cited in their article in 2012. And they say that effect sizes are a quantitative reflection of the magnitude of some phenomenon that is used for the purpose of addressing a question of interest. Now, unlike significance tests and null hypothesis significance testing, which are dependent on sample sizes. Effect sizes are independent, independent of sample size and can thus be considered to be a population parameter and not sample statistics. And what that allows us to do is to compare different studies across time and space. So why should we use them? Cohen says that effect sizes effect size measures are one of the most important outcomes of empirical studies. Now Cohen is pretty much the father of effect size and a lot of his work gets cited continuously still today. And the call for authors to report and interpret effect sizes as well as their corresponding confidence intervals has never been stronger than it is right now. In this tutorial I'm not going to be discussing confidence intervals but I will get to it in the future. Lakens writes that effect sizes are useful for three specific and particular reasons. Firstly, effect size reporting allows researchers to communicate the magnitude of an effect in a standardized manner. This can help explain the practical significance as well as the statistical significance of the result. Secondly, researchers are able to draw meta-analytic conclusions about a variety of studies using the same standardized effect size. That's what I was referring to across time and space. Previous studies which have reported effect sizes can be used in order to calculate appropriate sample sizes for future studies a priori, which becomes important. So what type of effect sizes are there? There are three main effect size families. The D family, which is the difference between the means, the R family, which is the variance explained, and the C categorical association family. Now, within those three families, there are two different groups. Firstly, there is between group designs versus within group designs, and parametric versus non-parametric designs. This part of the tutorial will be focusing on the difference family. So, this is perhaps the most commonly known and therefore used measure of effect size, which is known as Cohen's D most commonly. Cohen's D is a measure of effect size that is used to describe the standardized mean difference of an effect. Cohen's D can range from zero to infinity, where higher scores are equated to a greater magnitude of difference. Cohen in 1988 and Lakens in 2013 used subscripts to denote the different versions of Cohen's D, and I'll be continuing to use that practice in this tutorial as it helps prevent confusion. So Cohen's DS, the first D which we will be looking at is, um, is at Cohen's D for the standardized mean difference between two groups of independent observations for the sample, which can be denote, denoted as DS. The subscript of S refers to the fact that this is the difference between samples. It is recommended that Bezel's correction be used as it corrects upward bias in the estimation of the population variance as well as some of the bias in the estimation of which the population standard deviation. Bezel's correction is used when n minus 1 is used instead of just plain n. And of course n represents the sample size of the particular group, which is the correction for the difference between the sample and the population. So on this slide we can see the different formulas that we can get to to create or to calculate DS and the first formula is when you don't have the t-score but you do have the means and standard deviations as well as the sample size. 
and yeah for the second formula is when you do have a t-score and you generally do but a lot of papers don't report the effect sizes so you're able to but they do report the, the standard deviations and the means and the sample size so you can calculate the effect size of someone else's paper and then use that effect size to a priori calculate the sample size for your own research as well as to compare the literature so an example calculation suppose we want to determine the magnitude of effect and the difference on the means <clears throat> suppose we want to determine the magnitude of effect between the difference in means of the knee lift abdominal test let's call it KLAT in the injured and in the non-injured groups after calculating an independent samples test we have the following output this is an output from SPSS but most analysis software gives the same basic statistical output so yeah we can see for the injured group and non-injured group they have both have a sample size of 32 injured has a mean of 9.56 non-injured a mean of 14.65 the standard deviation of the injury group is 6.71 and the standard deviation of the non injury group is 9.03 or 9.04 so to calculate DS we would first need to calculate the pooled standard deviation with bezels correction and this is using formula 1 where is it? there so you can see the whole part in that square rooted area that's pretty much to calculate the the pooled standard deviation. So, okay, that's the formula using the data shown above. We we'll translate into 32 minus 1 times the first standard deviation plus the sample size 32 minus 1 times the second standard deviation divided by 32 plus 32 minus 2, which would give us a value of 2.11 which is then square rooted giving us a final standardizer of 8.06 the standardizer here would be the denominator but for effect size we call it a standardizer the numerator will be calculated by subtracting the mean of the first group 9.56 from the second group which is 14.67 giving us a numerator value of five, negative 5.11 finally we would then divide the numerator five point, negative 5.11 by the denominator or standardizer 8.09 giving us a DS value of 0.63 I'll get to the interpretation of the effect sizes towards the end of the tutorial and additionally like I said if you have the t-score value you can calculate the DS by using formula 2 that one which is simply the t-score times the square root of 1 divided by the sample size plus 1 divided by the sample size which gives us 0 0.25 so and the t value would be 2.56 so times that by 0 0.25 gives us a ds value of 0 0.64 which is slightly higher but not too much difference than the other formula so as I said the standard DS is quite upwards biased because it's based on sample size and to rectify that we can use hedges correction like here we go as Cohen's DS is based on sample means it gives us a biased estimation of those population of the population effect size especially when using small sample sizes such as those that are less than 20 this has led D to DS being referred to as an uncorrected effect size and the corrected effect size in the D family is Hedges GS which is often referred to as an unbiased effect size so you should always try to use the Hedges correction instead of plain old DS so Hedges correction formula is this it's basically the DS times the percentage or the probability which you would get so to apply Hedges conversion we will simply multiply our initial DS score of 0 0.63 we're using the more complex formula output by the sum of 1 minus 3 divided by 4 ti or times open bracket 32 plus 32 which is the sample size close bracket 
close bracket, minus 9, close bracket. Then the sum of this calculation is 0 0.99, so we would simply then multiply 0 0.63, our initial DS score, by 0 0.99, giving us a GS score of 0 0.62, which is now an unbiased effect size. There is one more between group glass, I mean between group uh, effect size index, which we will be talking about, which I'll be talking about, and that is glasses delta. Glasses delta was originally developed in the context of experimental research but has subsequently been generalized to non-experimental studies and uses the standard deviation of the control group as a standardizer. Well, that's what it initially did. But because there is n generally no control group in observational studies, Klein recommends using glasses delta twice, using the standard deviation of each group. So when standard deviations differ substantially between groups, glasses delta is the preferred effect size, me effect size to use. And the glasses delta formula is pretty simple, but you would do it twice for each group's standard deviation. So glasses delta one would be the the difference of the means divided by the first standard deviation, which we could denote as delta one, and then standard the difference between the means divided by the second group standard deviation, which we could denote as delta two. And you can see the difference here would be 0 0.76 as opposed to 0 0.57. So now moving on to within group designs for the D family. The calculation for Cohen's D using within group designs is conceptually the same as the calculation for Cohen's D when using between group designs. The primary difference is that for between group designs, the difference between the two groups measurement is divided by the standard deviation of both groups, whereas for within group designs, it uses the standard deviation of the different scores. The standardized mean difference effect size for within subject designs will be referred to as Cohen's DZ because the subscript Z calls to attention that the analysis is no longer X or Y, but is instead their difference. So going through some within group D family formula, the first one is the standard DZ formula and it's really not recommended, but it's there just to show you that it exists. Coming in 2012 suggested that the most appropriate DFX size to use for within group designs would be to use the average standard deviations of both repeated measures and this type of deck size is called DAV due to the fact that it is the average score. And that is the formula for DAV. It's pretty simple. The mean difference of the scores divided by the square root of the average standard deviations. So as DAV is positively biased, Hedges correction should be used. like all estimates which are positively biased. Hedges correction should be applied. However, unlike Hedges G, S Hedges GAV is not completely unbiased, just less biased than DAV. So an example calculation. Suppose we now want to calculate the difference between the means for a within subject design using a paired sample t-test. We want to investigate if there is any difference in the size of the cross-sectional area in millimeters of the multi muscle at the level of the fifth vertebrate when FOSS bowlers lift the le left arm compared to when they lift the right arm of the plinth. After entering the data into a statistical analysis software, we get the output. This was calculated in SPSS and is shown below. Take a moment to read through that because I don't feel like saying it out. Okay, the moment's over. So now, if we wanted to calculate the effect size for the magnitude of difference for the above dependent on samples t-test calculation, Cohen's dz would be the most appropriate one to use. The simplest way to calculate Cohen's dz would be to use the formula shown in the last slide, or the second to last slide, 
which is simply the t-score divided by the square root of the sample size. So as the t-value is negative 1.58 and the square root of 26 would be something, it would eventually lead us to get a Cohen's DZ effect size, effect size score of 0 0.31. And now remember if you have a positive or negative effect sc size score, it is commonly accepted for the score to be reported as a positive one due to the fact that the score is merely an artifact of the order it was calculated in. So if you have a, a smaller number being subtracted from a large number, your score will obviously be negative, such as in the next case. To calculate m diff, the mean difference, we would simply need to subtract the mean of the first group by the mean of the second group. So 684 minus 703, which will give us a negative 19.423. After we have calculated the m diff value, we can simply divide this value by the square root of the average of the two group squared deviations, which gives us a DAV score of 0 0.164. The difference be between the two within group design effects me size measures we have calculated is primarily due to the fact that Cohen's DZ is an overestimation of the size of the effects, which is why DAV is preferable to report. And as we discussed, Cohen's DAV, like DS, is based on sample estimates and is therefore still positively biased. So we can use Hedges correction to correct this bias. And to convert DAV into the corrected DAV, we simply multiply our DAV score, by, which is 0 0.16, by the sum of 1 minus 3 divided by 4 times the total sample size minus 1 minus 1. It's easier to do and not to say and it ends up giving us a converted GAV value of 0 0.59, which is really not that difference. But the larger your sample size gets, the more difference it will make. Coming notes that while Hedges GAV is less biased than DAV, it is still not completely unbiased, unlike the Hedges GS. However, while it's not completely unbiased, it is still preferable to report GAV over DAV. So now on to the interpretation and reporting of the D family. Cohen gives his rule of thumb interpretation where a D of 0 0.2 is considered small, a 0 0.5 effect size represents a medium effect size, and 0 0.8 is a large effect size. Now, what D actually represents as a proportion of a standard deviation. This means that if we can calculate a D value of 1, we know that the means of the two groups differ by exactly one standard deviation, and a D value of 0 0.5 tells us that the two groups' means differ by half a standard deviation, and so on. The interpretation that Cohen gives, has given us should only be used when the findings of a study are extremely novel and have no comparison of and no comparison is available in the literature. The primary way of comparing effect sizes and the strength of your effect size is to compare it to other findings in the literature, because you may find that a small effect size, while not statistically significant, has a very large practical significance. The most correct interpretation of Cohen's D is to compare and relate to other effect sizes reported in the literature, and if possible, to discuss the practical consequences of the magnitude of effect. And an example table of reporting effect sizes could be as followed, and this is mainly for the difference of the between groups. I didn't do one for the within groups, but it's pretty much the same idea. N is 32 for both, the means, the standard deviations, the p value, which is significant in this case, and then you can list the different effect size indices that you used and you can discuss them. And that's it for this tutorial. In the next part I'll be discussing the R variance explained family, but not yet. Thanks for watching.